The Formers in Maya are tools which allows you to very quickly deform objects in incredibly handy ways. So in the first example here, we're going to be using the Bend Deformer. The Bend Deformer is super useful, but can be a little bit hard to handle in the beginning. But once you get a hang of it, it's really easy. So in with the Bend selected, just the Bend object here, we will go to Rigging. It's the first time we actually use the Rigging tab. And then we have Deform. And under here, we have a lot of stuff. And this is, again, why Maya is very can be very complicated to work with because there's so many things here. But if you know what you're looking for, then it's quite easy. So under Deform, we're going to use a non-linear Deform. And let's just um, dock this menu here. And then we can use Bend. So what happens now is that under Inputs, we have a Bend node attached to our model. You see what this looks like. So if you want to actually bend this, we can just change the curvature. <laughs> so if you set this to 180, see what happens now. Uh, you can see that we get this really nice, essentially like a well, because of the shape of the of the stones we laid out here. We can also just set it a bit lower, just we get this gap, and now we have this really nice well, or a hole, or you know, whatever it might be. And what's happening is, if you look at the if you look at the the area here, this uh, this cyan color, by changing the curvature, we're changing, we're just bending it. We're taking the entire thing, we're just wrapping it around based on how many degrees we want. So in my case here, I don't want it to go all the way because I, uh, I have no interest in making actually a well. What I want to do, I want to set this to something like 90 degrees. And then we have like an arc. This would be like the entrance to a sewer or a mansion or you know whatever it might be. And instead of having to place all these and bending the cobblestones or whatever, you can just create a re completely flat surface and then bending it. Now where the complexity can arise from the bend deformer is if we use, if we use, go in here and we start to modify the actual gizmo. You can see what happens now. Sometimes the gizmo comes into the wrong, into it would in the wrong orientation. So then we just have to make sure that we go in here and we just bend it properly. We can also use this to create very interesting shapes as well. So this way we just have really cool shapes. And since this here is all non-destructive and it's a deformer, we can animate all this. So you can in theory have something going from here and back and forth, you know, and tune up music or whatever it might be. So you can create this really cool morphing architecture, or you can really do it in a procedural way. Based on this single thing here, based on a single piece of geometry, you could make anything from this like weird abstract walk walk path like this to some like entrance to the bat cave, like an ancient bat cave, or we can turn into like a full on like a full on um, well like this. So bend deformer, really, really handy. If you want to delete it, you can just delete the bend handle, and then it goes right back to normal. And then look at let's, let's look at the twist deformer as well. So twist twist deformer is under the same, uh, it's in the same area, which is deform nonlinear, and um, it is here, and then just twist. So let's see what happens when we enable the twist. So if we just set the start angle to something. Different. What's happening now? It's actually just twisting the entire thing. You can just see what's happening here. It just twists. It just twists. It just changes the angle from from uh, from zero, which is here, to something more extreme. So it actually just takes us and twists the entire thing. Really useful if you're doing something like a barrel of a gun or anything like that. Really one of my favorite deformers as well. And but you can go with crazy if you were to you know rotate the entire uh, like the entire gizmo around so make sure it's it's in the correct spot also if you are in doubt where to actually change the deformer it's always under the inputs the input is always where it will live because this is where it well it connects to the actual node the node has an input like the model node here the shape node has an input and the input is a twist also change the end angle and you can create some really, really crazy stuff. Then next, let's look into the wave. The wave is one of these you're not going to be using a whole lot, but can be quite handy sometimes. So this is under the exact same spot, non-linear. And let's just change the wavelength. And then let's change the amplitude as well. So now you can see what's going on. We get this really crazy stuff going on here. 
So if again, if you hold on the control key, you can get uh, you can get more fidelity. And let's change the amplitude a bit down as well. So you almost get this like drop effect, like almost like there is like a drop which fell down and then it's just going, it's just bouncing off. So really handy stuff. Let's delete these two and let's look into the texture node or the texture. So this is not under nonlinear, nor is the lattice one as well. So this is under deform and texture. So what this means is that we can now with a texture map actually deform our object. So let's click texture and then we go to our texture here. And this is where we have to go into the attribute editor and go to the texture deformer. And under texture, there's nothing here. So, you know, not, no deformation is going to actually happen. But if we click on the input here, this is, you see this little dot here or this little checker pattern. We're going to be using this a lot later on. This is where we actually input a map. And now we are going to be inputting a noise. And right here, we have a noise. And now you can see what happens. Everything goes super crazy. And we're not really going to change any of the settings on the noise right away. In order to go back to the last node now, we can, this is where we can go where we go back to the connection. We can click on this arrow here. And now we can go back to it. And this is where we can change the point space from UV to we can set to local. We can set the handle to normal. And now it's just going to be moving it based on the actual normal. Instead of the, the handle just up and down, we're going to be moving it based on the actual normal. So now we can set the strength down to something really low. Now we can go in here. Now we can start to change the actual uh, the actual amount. So now we can get something really interesting just by by changing the just by adding a texture noise to it. I don't use this a whole lot either, but once in a while it's fantastic. This is really if you need to break something up really quickly, or if you are doing some kind of environment or something like that, you have a, you have a mountain and you have to add a lot of resolution to it right away. So let's just delete this, and there we go, and hide this again, and then lattice. So one of the most useful deformers in my book is the lattice deformer. We find this under deform and we find this under lattice. So almost at the top and lattice. So now we can see we have different uh, different uh, like points here we can manipulate. So if we go into lattice, now we can go in here. We can just start to move stuff around like this. We can use, we can rotate, scale and transform them. So we can just very quickly just change, do changes to our to our model. So very quick universal changes like this, super handy stuff. It's really one of my favorite deformers and it's so handy to use. So this is used for all sorts of things. It's, it's, it's not like a soft select where you need to just change like a certain region of it. This is where you have to do big global changes to shape off of something like this. I use this a lot for faces or if you're doing maybe like a tree trunk and you need to just change the shape drastically. You have some environment and you just have to change it up. Very useful stuff. You can also use it for rigging, of course, where you can just, you can start to actually, you know, animate these kind of shapes here just to get these crazy shapes. So that's, those are the regular formers I use the most. These will really, really save your butt when it comes to, to general modeling. And of course you can use them for animation as well, but we'll get into that a bit later.